How's it going everybody? It's your neighborhood local Squatchy and today we're going to be talking about the GM lawsuit involving their active fuel management and dynamic fuel management. Now if you don't know what this is, GM actually had a thing called active fuel management from 2007 until 2018. They updated it to dynamic fuel management in 2019. And basically, long story short, is they had a set of lifters that would collapse in on themselves and actually make the vehicle run its normal eight cylinders down to four cylinders under light load conditions and under deceleration. Basically, their theory, their theory behind this was if they run it on less cylinders, it's more fuel efficient and less emissions on the environment and so on and so forth. In theory, this was a great idea. However, when it got put into practice in the real world, they found out that they had a lot of problems and never did anything about it. Now, personally, I saw quite a bit of these vehicles come in for lifter problems. The lifters would collapse, eat up the camshafts, broken valve springs, bent push rods, pretty much everything that they're telling you in all of the other videos. It's exactly what happened. Now, the sucky part is even when these vehicles would come in to get repaired, GM was very stringent on the amount of time that they would repair these vehicles. Basically, once they were out of warranty, that they were done. They actually had quite a bit of problems before where they added an, what they called extended coverage or special coverage to where they would actually cover it past the original powertrain warranty specifications. Now, while this was great, it's not like they fixed the vehicles. They were putting the same part number in for quite a long time, and even the updated part, part numbers therefore after, they were pretty much the same thing with little tweaks here and there, but they never actually fixed the problem. Now, basically what these lifters would do when they would collapse is they wouldn't be able to come back and relock into place and make the vehicle run on all eight cylinders again. So you just had a loose lifter in the lifter tray just kind of bouncing around not really doing a whole lot because the rest of the vehicle thought it was on eight cylinders and this one lifter was still stuck in four cylinder mode. So basically you would not open the exhaust valve or the intake valve on the affected cylinder. And eventually the lifter would eat up the camshaft and start distributing metal throughout the rest of the engine. Now even though GM had a whole bunch of different part numbers for these lifters, they would fail over and over and over again. Now famously, at least for me, it's not like it's famous famous, but the funniest story that it, it's not funny, the craziest thing that ever happened in the shop is we got a brand new 2019 Yukon with like 24 miles on it. Customer was complaining of a check engine light, blah, blah, blah. Sure enough, it was a misfire on a particular cylinder. One of these cylinders was an AFM affected cylinder. I believe it was four, six, one, and seven, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've worked on them. But basically, the lifter had already failed at 24 miles. And it had actually gotten so bad and so much metal had gone through the engine that the whole engine locked up on the test drive. Kaput. Done. Engine was done. When we took it apart, we actually found like melted crankshaft bearings. Everything was nice and purple. It got super hot. And I had only driven it two, three miles up and down the block. Now, this customer actually did get an entirely new engine, but they better. It only had 24 miles on it. Now, all of the things that they're telling you where, well, GM would put new parts in, but yeah, it's the same part number is true. And another bad thing is say bank one, you know, one side of the engine was affected. They would only pull that head off, replace those lifters. If the camshaft was damaged, they would replace the camshaft. And then they would allow us to put it all back together just like that. Now, if I was doing it on my own personal vehicle, aside from actually deleting the entire system altogether, I would actually pull both heads off and replace all 16 lifters and a new camshaft every time. But if the camshaft wasn't damaged, or the roller on the lifter wasn't damaged, then they said, don't replace the camshaft, the camshaft's not damaged. So you would only replace one bank of lifters, no camshaft, no bearings, no push rods, no valve springs, just the affected parts on one side of the engine. Now, while this did let the vehicle continue on down the road, it was only a ticking time bomb until either that same set of lifters had a failure or the other bank had a failure. So basically, GM was band-aiding all of these vehicles for so many years just to get them out of warranty so they could wash their hands clean of it and say, Sorry, it's out of warranty, it's not my problem anymore. And it's starting to catch up with them. So many customers are mad, and you can tell by this class action lawsuit, that a lot of people are upset, and rightfully so, it was pretty much a faulty design. And this sucks to say because I literally went to a GM school, I was a GM technician because I loved working on these vehicles, I owned a lot of these vehicles prior to 2007 because I knew better, but I've only owned one vehicle that wasn't a GM product, and I only had it for a couple of months, and I sold it to get another one. I love the cars, I've always been an enthusiast, the LS engine is amazing, blah blah blah, everybody knows all of this stuff. However, from your just your average dad picking up a truck to drive his kids back and forth, they had problems. And not everybody had problems, you gotta realize, yeah, hundreds of thousands of these vehicles were affected, but they make almost a million of them a year. 
So even if you have 20,000 vehicles in one year that are affected, yeah, it sounds like a lot, but when you put it into the grand scheme of things, it's less than 1% almost. So I kind of see it from both sides. From a manufacturer side, I kind of see, well, yeah, we kind of have a problem, but it's not super huge deal. Like we can band-aid it and keep it going down the road. But from a consumer and an enthusiast perspective, I really wish that they would have done things right, redesigned the lifters, or actually gone away with the whole system entirely. I don't know why in a dealership world, if, if a customer had problems, why they couldn't actually just pull the AFM lifters out and do what everybody in the aftermarket does and replace it with a regular camshaft and a full regular set of lifters and just remove the VLOM, which is the actual manifold underneath the intake that controls all of the oil passages. If you just put a regular VLOM, like a regular lifter cover on it, regular set of lifters and a regular camshaft, you have a regular LS engine again. Why they didn't do this, I have no idea, but they wanted to keep the active fuel management and that's just the decision they went with. So all this sucks from an enthusiast perspective because not only do you have all of the lifter problems and all of the engine problems in general with the 5.3s and 6 liters and 6.2s, GM's not making anything cool. There's not a single new GM vehicle that I would love to go out and go buy if I had the money. Not a single one. I don't like the new Camaros. The C8 Corvette, yeah, it's cool. It's just not my style. They're losing the enthusiast customer base by the vehicles that they're choosing to make. Your regular mechanic guy is not going to go buy a C8 Corvette, one, because they can't afford it, and two, because it's not the things that they liked. Most Americans don't necessarily want all of these huge frills and expensive things. They just want a regular pickup truck or a regular car to get them back and forth, have a little fun with, and be reliable. And GM's not making any of that stuff. If you look at all of the vehicles they're making with the new EV Silverado and all of the new electric hybrid options that they want to make, that they're trying to make, that they have made, all of the fun stuff's going to go away. And it sucks because you see manufacturers like Ford with the Raptor and the Bronco and the GT and all of the cool things that they make. Even with the Mustang, they have the GT500. GM doesn't really have a whole lot. Yeah, they have the Z01 and the Camaro and the, the new Corvettes, but most of that's unobtainable for most people. And it sucks because GM is just so behind the ball on what the actual customers and their consumers want. If you look at Ford and Dodge, they have the Bronco and the TRX. And then Dodge has the Trackhawk and the Hellcats and all of the cool cars that they've made with stupid amounts of horsepower and awesome off-road capability with the TRX. And then you have Ford with the Raptor and the Bronco. I mean, they're just killing the game. They're giving the customers what they want. And if you look at the numbers, they're selling like hotcakes. Everybody wants a Raptor. Everybody wants a TRX. You want to know why? Because they're cooler. Now, yes, GM has made the new ZR2 Silverado, but... It's the same truck. The Raptor actually has different upper and lower control arms, has a real nice shock on it. Fox, Dodge has the Bilsteins. GM just has their Multimatic blah 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 with a piggyback reservoir on the bottom. Same upper control arm, same lower control arm, no increased track width, no increased suspension travel. It's a regular Silverado with the fancy shock in there. Nothing too crazy, it's not mind blowing, it's not some super amazing off-road vehicle. Well, yes, it is cool, like, for a regular truck, it's not any different than the AT4. And the AT4 isn't any different than the regular Silverado, minus the shock. And the shock's replaceable in the aftermarket world super easily and with way better options to do the exact same thing. Ford and Dodge have done super amazing things with all of their off-road and performance vehicles. GM hasn't done a whole lot. So with the, the decline in the cool cars that GM's making and all of the problems that they're having with the active fuel management and dynamic fuel management... I don't see how GM's going to keep going and pleasing their customers. And it's sad to say because I love the brand, I love everything that they used to do, but they haven't done anything cool in a super duper long time. And it's really sad to see and I really hope that they can get their things together. I don't know what this lawsuit's going to mean for the average consumer, but I know it's not going to be good for GM. Whether they actually have to pay any money or not is kind of irrelevant because so many customers are upset, it's put a big old poopy stain in their underpants. Even if you just look on YouTube, it's what most of the truck people and car people are talking about is GM's huge giant lawsuit in regards to their AFM and DFM systems. Like I said, whether or not they have to pay any money is irrelevant because so many people are talking about it. This is a huge black eye for the company and everybody's talking about it in a bad way. And even though in show business they say that, well, there's no such thing as bad press, I kind of disagree. So many loyal customers are going to jump shit because they have one either had these problems, they know somebody that's had these problems, or they just don't like the fear of worrying about it when they're driving their family across the country 
Am I gonna make it? Is my engine gonna fail? What's gonna happen to me and my truck? Are they gonna fix it if it does fail? A lot of people are worried where this is gonna go and I don't think it's good for GM. I don't know how they can fix it aside from actually recalling all of the vehicles and properly fixing them, whether that be completely getting rid of AFM and DFM or actually redesigning a good set of lifters. But nobody's gonna trust the new lifters if they decide to keep the AFM and the DFM in their vehicles because they haven't been able to do it yet, and it's been 7, 8, 9, it's a long time that they've had these systems. Since 2007, up until current, they have had this style of lifter in pretty much all of their automatic V8 vehicles. I don't think there's going to be anything that they can do to actually resolve this problem. I think it's going to have to be completely get rid of the AFM and DFM systems altogether. Now, they did have a whole, I don't know if it's... I don't know exactly how many, but they did have quite a few of the GM trucks that did not have the dynamic fuel management due to supply chain problems due to the coronavirus. These trucks don't have it at all, so I don't know why they couldn't just make all of their vehicles not have it. I just think that the best course of action for them from a consumer standpoint is to replace all of the lifters with a traditional style lifter and get rid of AFM and DFM altogether. I know that's not what they're going to do, I don't know what they're going to do, but it's probably going to be nothing, or they're going to have an like a special coverage, extended warranty type of deal where if you have this problem, we'll fix it, but it's not going to be a proactive, hey, bring your car in, let's get it taken care of ahead of time before anything happens. That's not what they're going to do. They're going to wait until you have a problem, make you take it to the dealership, and then probably do a shoddy fix like they've been doing for the last 15 years. So while it sucks to say that this is happening, why it's even a thing, I hate it. I love the GM. I like. I love GM. I've always loved GM. I literally went to school for it. There's the proof. GM ASAP. I went there. I did it. I loved it. I went to school for it. I thought that that was going to be my career for the rest of my life, and I made it five years. And I decided that the automotive dealership world just wasn't for me because of all of the shoddy things that they were doing. But everybody has their problems, and it's not like everybody else is perfect and GM doesn't have any problems. Of course, everybody has problems. But this is such a wide-scale problem, and so many people have had it, and GM has done absolutely nothing to appease their customers. It's basically, it's my way or the highway, take it or leave it, don't buy another truck. But people buy the same truck because they like them. They've always had them, their family's always had them. It's just a brand loyalty thing, that's the way people are. That's the way people are, that's the way I am. So why all of the vehicles I've ever had have been GM minus one. I have one right now. I have a 2009 Pontiac G5. Notice I don't have a new truck with active fuel management or dynamic fuel management. It's because I know better. And even if I did have one of those vehicles, it's either going to get the little electrical disable device that plugs into your OBD2 port and makes it never go into V4 mode, or it's actually going to get the heads ripped off a regular set of lifters and an aftermarket camshaft put in it anyways because LS stuff. Basically what it all comes down to is what GM's actually going to do after this lawsuit thing kind of all fizzles out. I bet we'll hear about it for the next two, three months and then we'll never hear about it again and everybody will forget about it and GM will, will continue to go on with business like normal. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope they actually have a fix for it, but only time will tell. Sorry guys to kind of touch on this bad news, but I think it needed to be talked about. If you guys have any questions, I'll make an update video. Just put all your comments down below in the comment section. Like I said, I was a GM tech for five years. I kind of know a lot of the things. However, I am not super great at talking and writing out a script and covering everything that needs to be covered. So if you guys heard something that I didn't mention in this video, if you guys have any other questions, put it down in the comment section below and I will either make an updated video kind of responding to a large group of questions or if there's not that many questions, I'll actually just respond to you in the comment section. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to be it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.